kwa vile tulikuwa tumesimama ni waombe tena basi ndugu zangu tusimame ili tumkumbuke shujaa wa Afrika ambaye kwa taarifa za leo tumepata habari ya kufariki kwake mzee wetu Robert Mugabe rais mstaafu wa nchi ya Zimbabwe Roho ya marehemu ipumzike kwa amani. Amina. Asanteni sana. Mheshimiwa Yoweri Kaguta Mseveni, Rais wa Jamhuri ya Uganda pamoja na Mama Janet Mseveni, mke wa Rais wa Uganda karibu sana mama Janet. Unajua unaposema Janet kidogo namfikiria mke wangu kule nyumbani. <laughs> Mheshimiwa Paramagamba Kabodi waziri wa mambo ya nje wa Tanzania. Mheshimiwa Sam Kutesa waziri wa mambo ya nje wa Uganda. Waheshimiwa mawaziri na manaibu waziri kutoka Tanzania na kutoka Uganda Waheshimiwa wabunge mlioko hapa wakiongozwa na wabunge wa kamati inayohusiana na biashara Waheshimiwa makatibu wakuu na manaibu katibu wakuu Waheshimiwa mabarozi na wawakilishi wa mashirika ya kimataifa mlioko hapa wakuu wa vyombo vya ulinzi na usalama waheshimiwa wakuu wa mikoa mliopo hapa ndugu Sarum Shamte mwenyekiti wa bodi ya wakurugenzi wa taasisi ya sekta binafsi kutoka Tanzania pamoja na mwakilishi wa ndugu Patrick Bitature mwenyekiti wa bodi ya wakurugenzi wa taasisi ya sekta binafsi kutoka Uganda wawakilishi wa jumuiya ya wafanyabiashara kutoka Tanzania na Uganda mlioko hapa ndugu wa shiriki ndugu wa na habari mabibi na mabwana habari za asubuhi ndugu zangu ni heshima kubwa kwangu kupata fursa ya kuhudhuria kongamano la kwanza la biashara kati ya Tanzania na Uganda kwa kweli hili ni tukio la kihistoria Hivyo nichukue fursa hii kwa niaba ya serikali na wananchi wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania kuwakaribisha sana wafanyabiashara wote lakini kumkaribisha sana Mheshimiwa Rais Mseveni pamoja na ndugu zetu wengine wote kutoka Uganda hapa nyumbani kwetu Tanzania pia ninawapongeza sana kwa waandaaji wa tukio hili muhimu Aidha nitumie fursa hii kutoa shukrani zangu za dhati kwako Mheshimiwa Rais Mseveni na wawakilishi wa jumuiya ya wafanyabiashara kutoka Uganda kwa kukubali mwaliko wetu na kuja kushiriki kwenye kongamano hili la hapa Dar es Salaam. Mkutano kama hii inatoa fursa kwa wafanyabiashara wetu sio tu kubaini na kutumia fursa za biashara na uwekezaji lakini pia kushughulikia changamoto mbalimbali za biashara na uwekezaji kati ya nchi zetu mbili. Mheshimiwa Rais, Mheshimiwa viongozi na ndugu wa shiriki, ni wazi kabisa kwamba mafungamano ya kijamii na kiuchumi kati ya wananchi wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania na Jamhuri ya Uganda yamekuwepo enzi na enzi. Hata kabla ya ukoloni mkongwe Mafungamano haya yamekuwepo. Kiuharisia sisi ni ndugu wa damu. Hata lugha, tamaduni na mila zetu ni ushahidi tosha wa ukweli huu. Kwa bahati mbaya kuna watu walikuja kutoka nje ya bara letu la Afrika wakaweka mipaka kati ya jamii zetu. Lakini kwa namna yoyote ile mipaka hii haiwezi kututenganisha 
au kuondoa undugu wetu tutaendelea kuwa kitu kimoja na kutembea pamoja katika shughuli za maendeleo ya nchi zetu mbili leo asubuhi nilizungumza neno moja kuniga mheshimiwa rais akaniuliza kuniga maana yake unakwama au nyama au ugali au kuniga nasema ndio hiyo hiyo anasema na sisi kwetu kuniga nikasema hii ndiye inavyoonyesha ni kwa namna gani sisi wa Tanzania na Waganda tuko pamoja mahusiano yetu laimarishwa zaidi baada ya kurejea tena kwa jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki iliyovunjika mwaka 1977 zikiwa miongoni mwa waanzilishi wa jumuiya mpya ya Afrika Mashariki nchi zetu zimekuwa na dhamira ya dhati na zimeendelea kuweka jitihada kubwa kuelekea mtangamano wa kikanda ambapo msingi wake ni watu na nguvu ya soko ushirikiano wetu wa karibu upo pia katika jumuiya zingine za kikanda na kimataifa kama vile jumuiya ya nchi za maziwa makuu jumuiya ya madora umoja wa Afrika pamoja na umoja wa mataifa na katika jumuiya hizi zote mara nyingi tumekuwa na misimamo ya pamoja na tumeshikamana kwenye masuala mbalimbali sisi waganda na watanzania hivyo ni jukumu letu sasa kutumia mafungamano haya na mahusiano yetu ya kihistoria kidiplomasia na kindugu ili kusukuma ajenda yetu ya maendeleo ya kiuchumi kwa maslahi ya nchi zetu mbili mataifa yetu yanazo rasilimali za kutosha kabisa kuleta maendeleo hususan ni watu wetu na mali asili zetu tunazo fursa za kukuza uchumi katika sekta zote ikiwemo utalii madini kilimo mifugo uvuvi gesi mafuta na muhimu zaidi kwa sasa ni sekta ya bidhaa za viwandani yani manufacturing sectors hata hivyo kiwango cha biashara na uwekezaji kati ya nchi zetu bado ni kidogo sana pamoja na kuwepo kwa ongezeko katika miaka ya karibuni baadhi ya takwimu zinaweza kuthibitisha ukweli huu mathalan mwaka jana 2018 thamani ya biashara kati ya Tanzania na Uganda ilikuwa shilingi bilioni 388.5 tu ingawa kiwango hiki ni ongezeko la asilimia saba ukilinganishwa na mwaka 2017 ambapo ilikuwa shilingi bilioni 116.7 bado ni kidogo sana ikilinganishwa na fursa zilizopo katika nchi zetu mbili aidha kwa kuangalia zidadi ya miradi ya uwekezaji Uganda inayo miradi 22 tu nchini Tanzania yenye thamani ya dola za Marekani milioni 143.25 inayotoa fursa ya ajira ya watu 2230 tu zaidi ya hapo kiwango cha mizigo ya Uganda inayoingizwa kupitia bandari ya Dar es Salaam ni kidogo sana mathalani mwaka 2017 na 18 zilipita tani 167000 kati ya jumla ya tani milioni 7.1 za bidhaa zinazoingizwa Uganda milioni 7.1 ya bidhaa lakini zilizopitia Tanzania ni tani 167000 hiki ni kiwango kidogo sana Mheshimiwa Rais na waheshimiwa viongozi na ndugu wa shiriki kwa kuzingatia takwimu hizi chache swali la kujiuliza ni kwa nini kiwango cha biashara na uwekezaji kimeendelea kuwa chini pamoja na fursa nyingi zilizopo katika nchi zetu mbili why kwa nini kiwango hiki kiko chini kwa mfano nimetaja makampuni yaliyosajiliwa hapa ya Uganda ni 22 wakati makampuni yaliyosajiliwa hapa ya Kenya 
ni 504 kwa nini Uganda na Tanzania kiwango cha biashara kiko chini majibu ya swali hili yanaweza yasiwe rahisi au ya moja kwa moja nimefurahi sana mwakilishi wa wafanyabiashara statement yake ya mwisho hapa kwamba tusije tukawa tunaishia na kufanya makongamano tu na kukutana alafu no action at the end nimemfurahia kweli ni bahati mbaya huyo mama yuko yuko Uganda angekuwa Tanzania ningemfikiria fikirie ningemfikiria fikiria kumtafutia kazi unajua sasa <laughs> lakini huu ndio ukweli haya ndio maswali ya msingi sisi wafanyabiashara wa Tanzania na wafanyabiashara wa Uganda tunatakiwa tujiulize haya ndio maswali ya msingi ambapo sisi watendaji wa serikali tulioko Tanzania na watendaji wa serikali walioko Uganda tunatakiwa tujiulize haya ndio maswali ya msingi sisi maraisi mimi pamoja na mzee wangu mzee Yoweri Kaguta Mseveni tunatakiwa tujiulize kwa nini biashara ya Tanzania na Uganda iko chini mimi nina matumaini makubwa katika mikutano hii ya wafanyabiashara ya kukutana wafanyabiashara wa Tanzania na wenzao wa Uganda tutapata majibu kutokana na maswala haya ambayo yamekuepo kwa miaka mingi hata hivyo kwa kuwa nami pia nimepata heshima ya kuwepo kwenye tukio hili muhimu nitataja baadhi ya sababu za kiwango kidogo cha biashara na uwekezaji kati ya nchi zetu mbili baadhi ya sababu hizi zinaweza kuhusiana na vikwazo vya kikodi na visivyo vya kikodi lakini changamoto kubwa ninayoiona mimi inahusiana na miundombinu ya usafiri na usafirishaji ni wazi kwamba kwa muda mrefu ushoroba wetu wakati umekuwa ukifanya kazi chini ya kiwango kwa sehemu hii inasababishwa na ufanisi mdogo wa bandari ya Dar es Salaam ikiwemo uwezo mdogo wa bandari vitendo vya rushwa na wizi ucheleweshaji wa mizigo na ulasimu usio wa lazima sambamba na hili reli ya kati inayoanzia Dar es Salaam hadi Mwanza imekuwa na ufanisi mdogo kumekuwa na upungufu wa vichwa vya treni na mabehewa vile vile baadhi ya vipande vya njia ya reli vimekuwa vikihitaji ukarabati wa mara kwa mara tatizo hili pia linakihusu kivuko treni kati ya Mwanza na Port Berry kupitia ziwa Victoria kutokana na changamoto hizi kumekuwa na utegemezi mkubwa wa usafiri wa barabara ambao kama mnavyofahamu sio tu na gharama kubwa lakini pia sio endelevu haiwezekani kubeba mizigo mikubwa kwa njia ya barabara vinginevyo gharama za matengenezo na ukarabati wa mara kwa mara sitakuwa kubwa sana na haziwezi kubebeka Waheshimiwa viongozi baada ya kutambua changamoto hizi na zingine nyingi ambazo sijazitaja jitihada mbalimbali zimechukuliwa na nyingine zinaendelea kuchukuliwa Lengo lilikuwa ni kuondoa kabisa vikwazo na kujenga mazingira mwafaka kwa ajili ya biashara na uwekezaji sio tu kati ya nchi zetu mbili lakini pia ndani ya jumuiya yetu ya Afrika Mashariki Moja ya jitihada kubwa ambazo ningependa nizitaje hapa ndugu zangu zilizochukuliwa ni kuboresha miundombinu ya usafiri na usafirishaji ambapo miradi mingi inatekelezwa na mingine imekamilika Baadhi ya miradi hii ni pamoja na upanuzi wa bandari ya Dar es Salaam kwa gharama ya zaidi ya trilioni moja ukarabati wa reli ya kati na ununuzi wa vichwa na mabehewa mapya ya treni kazi hii tumeifanya na takriban miaka miwili iliyopita kwa kushauriana na kushirikiana na kaka yangu mzee Mseveni tumefufua vivuko treni kati ya Mwanza na Port Berry kupitia Ziwa Victoria 
hata hivyo kama nilivyosema hapo awali bado kuna kazi kubwa ya kufanya ili kuongeza ufanisi wa kivuko hiki vile vile ili kuongeza ufanisi kwenye bandari ya Dar es Salaam tumefungua kituo cha huduma ya pamoja yani one stop shop kinachofanya kazi masai shina mane kwa siku sanjari na hili tumedhibiti vitendo vya kiuhalifu bandarini na ndio maana tulifanya mabadiliko mapya na tukamteua mtendaji mkuu wa bandari injini ya Kakoko sifahamu kama yuko hapa anajitahidi sana kufanya kazi zake vizuri pia ili kuboresha na kurahisisha upitaji wa watu na mizigo kwenye mipaka yetu tumefungua kituo cha huduma za pamoja mpakani pale Mtukura lakini tumepunguza pia mambo ya kusimamishwa simamishwa mizigo barabarani kwa kila mahali ili pawe pana cheki pointi zisizozidi tatu kutoka hapa mpaka Uganda zaidi ya hayo tumeanzisha huduma za usafiri wa anga kati ya nchi zetu ambapo kuna safari ya moja kwa moja kupitia mashirika yetu ya ndege ya Air Tanzania na Uganda Airline na katika hili namshukuru sana kaka yangu mheshimiwa Mseveni kwa jitihada zake kubwa anazozifanya ni imani yetu kuwa hatua hii sio tu itaimarisha maingiliano ya kibiashara miongoni mwetu na miongoni mwa watu wetu lakini pia itakuza utalii katika nchi zetu Sanjari na hatua hizi serikali imeamua kutekeleza mradi wa ujenzi wa reli ya kisasa kutoka Dar es Salaam hadi Mwanza utakapokamilika bila shaka itakuwa ni mkombozi mkubwa wa wafanyabiashara Hatua nyingine muhimu tuliyochukua ni kubuni mipango mahususi ya kitaifa inayolenga kurahisisha na kuharakisha biashara na uwekezaji ikiwemo kuanzisha wizara mahususi yenye dhamana ya uwekezaji chini ya ofisi ya waziri mkuu lakini pia tumeanza utekelezaji wa mipango mkakati wa kujenga mazingira wezeshi ya biashara nchini yani the blueprint for regulatory reforms on Tanzania business environment katika jumuiya yetu ya Afrika Mashariki jitihada mbalimbali zimefanywa pia ikiwemo kulidhia na utekeleza itifaki ya pamoja ya forodha na soko la pamoja jitihada hizi zimewezesha wakazi wa Afrika Mashariki kuvuka mipaka na kupitisha bidhaa zao kwa uhuru zaidi kwa kweli naweza kusema kwa ujasiri kabisa kuwa kwa sehemu kubwa changamoto nyingi ambazo kwa muda mrefu zimekuwa zikikwamisha biashara na uwekezaji kati ya nchi zetu zote zimeondolewa au zimepungua sana hata hivyo ni shuruti tuelekeze jitihada zetu katika kumaliza kabisa vikwazo vilivyopo ninafahamu hata katika ushuru magari yanaposafiri na leo tumelizungumza na mheshimiwa rais huku anatozwa dola tano magari yakiingia Uganda yanatozwa dola moja na hamsini na kadhalika hayo ni mambo ambayo nina uhakika mtayajadili hapa na kuyamaliza Waheshimiwa viongozi na ndugu wa shiriki lengo kuu la kufanya jitihada hizi zote ni kuvutia biashara na uwekezaji zaidi kwa kujenga mazingira yanayorahisisha na sio kukwamisha biashara hivyo basi nichukue fursa hii kuwakaribisha wawekezaji wote makini kutoka Uganda kuja kuwekeza nchini Tanzania the room is very open mnakaribishwa sana mjisikie nyumbani hapa ni kwenu kama tulikaa na mseveni kule mirongo karagwe kwa miaka yote tushindwe kukaa na ninyi mkiwa mnafanya biashara hapa na kukreate employment lakini kama rais Mseveni alikaa hapa Tanzania miaka yote arudi Uganda awazuie wa Tanzania kwenda kufanya biashara kule Uganda ni vitu ambavyo haviwezekani 
Kwa hiyo mkutano huwa wafanya biashara wa pande zote mbili. Uwe ndio mwanzo wa kufanya biashara kubwa sana miongoni mwa watu wetu. Tusioneane wivu fanyeni biashara. Mheshimiwa Mseven alikuwa ananiambia kuna wafanya biashara hapa karibu 200 waliotoka Uganda. Ningefurahi mbaki hapa muanze kufungua mabiashara huko. Kama ni kiwanda cha sukari cha Uganda fungua hapa sukari ipao. Kama ni kiwanda cha nini hivyo hivyo. Na kwa Watanzania nao naambiwa leo wako karibu 800,000 mkaivamie Uganda mkafanye biashara kule. Na ruga nzuri ya kumalizia kule hata kama huyafahamu mengine sema mwiba lenyo sebo mwiba lenyo nyebo. Maana yake asante sana. Tufanye biashara. Tumechelewa ndugu zangu. Tumechelewa. Na hili nawaambia kwa dhati tumechelewa. We are still sleeping. Tumechelewa. Kama tunaweza tukakubaliana mimi na rais Mseveni kujenga bomba kutoka Hoima kwenda Tanga the longest heated duniani yako mambo ambayo tuli sacrifice ilibidi baadhi ya Tanzania tupeleke bungeni kupunguza baadhi ya kodi ambazo zipo kwa mjibu wa sheria na leo nataka niwape siri moja nilikuwa namuuliza mzee mseveni mbona unacherewesha hili bomba kwa sababu ya kodi ya huko ambayo umekataa kuikubali kodi yenyewe ni dola sita wakati utakuwa unatengeneza bilioni nane USA dola bilioni themanini USA dola sacrifice hii kodi kidogo ukiliate employment na utapata fedha for a long time Watu wako wa TRA wasikuchereweshe. Ni TRA au ni nini ile ya ya Uganda inaitwaje? Inaitwaje? Uganda Revenue Authority. Wasikuchereweshe mzee. Sisi tulitaka hiyo pipeline iitwe Kaguta pipeline. Siku tunapofungua wana kuchelewesha nikamtolea mfano mimi nilipoingia madarakani simfundishi mzee lakini nilipoingia madarakani nimebadilisha makamishi na general sio swala la kujidai lakini ni baya watano for three and a half years nikamwambia wewe umemngangania wa nini huko We are supposed to move. Katika biashara huwezi kupata super profit. Is sharing and giving you have to lose a retro so that you gain more. <laughs> Nimeona nilizungumze hili kwa sababu mimi hili linaniuma tulibidi tupeleke mabadiliko ya sheria ya kodi bungeni kwa ajili ya kuaccommodate kodi na hili bomba lijengwe watu wameshaanza kuwa employed wanayofanya feasibility study na kuonyesha bomba linapita wapi sisi Tanzania mikoa minane itafaidika na hili bomba bomba likishaanza collection ya revenue ya Uganda Uganda itakuwa kwa takwimu za assessment future itakuwa ndiyo inaongoza katika uchumi katika Afrika Kwa nini ucherewesha na watendaji biocrat Mzee inawezekana umekuwa mpole kabla ya wakati ule ulipokuwa ukapigana ulikuwa mkali sasa uongeze ongeze ukali kidogo kwenye hili idadi ya watu watakao pata employment ni more than 20000 sisi politician ni lazima tu create employment kwa watu wetu
Kwa hiyo bomba hili halitakiwi kucheleweshwa. No matter sababu ni za wawekezaji lakini we must accommodate them so that the, pro, the, the business should start quickly. Kwa hiyo nimeona nilizungumze hili sitaki niwe mnafiki. Nilimweleza mzee wangu na ninyi na waeleza watendaji. I wish watendaji hawa wangehamia Tanzania, wa Tanzania wakaenda Uganda, ni dili nao kidogo angalau kwa mwezi mmoja. <laughs> Uganda oe <laughs> Tanzania oe <laughs> Uganda oe <laughs> Nimeona nilizungumza hili ndugu zangu wafanyabiashara kwa sababu wafanyabiashara ni risk taker na ndio maana wanafanikiwa katika biashara Wafanyabiashara wangefanya kama sisi serikalini tunavyofanya basi ingekuwa na wafanyabiashara Wafanyabiashara they are always after movement they just want to see the results sisi watendaji serikali we don't care kwa sababu we always get our salary mfanyabiashara asipo move asipo pata profit even imagine maana yake ni kufeli kwa sababu anahitaji kulipa mishahara wafanyakazi wake anatakiwa kulipa kwenye mabenki and so on lakini sisi watendaji wa serikali we don't care mshahara upo hata kama hatukusanye kodi hata kama maendeleo haya move we don't care sasa ndio maana nimelizungumza hili watendaji wote wa serikali ndani ya Uganda na ndani ya Tanzania ni lazima tu facilitate miradi ambayo ita create employment ni lazima tu facilitate miradi ambayo itajenga nguvu kwa wafanyabiashara wetu kufanya business that's what we need ndugu zangu milango ya madirisha yetu iko wazi kwa ajili ya wawekezaji wote makini kutoka ndani na nje ya nchi. Mazingira yetu ya biashara na uwekezaji yanatabirika tena sana. Na hii inachangiwa na utulivu wetu kisiasa, amani yetu, usalama wa nchi zetu na zaidi ya hazo tunazo sheria mahususi kwa kuwalinda wawekezaji. Pamoja na wito wangu huu naomba nitoe lai kwa wafanyabiashara na wawekezaji wote kuwa katika shughuli zenu zote mnazozifanya muheshimu sheria na kanuni zilizowekwa zipo sheria na kanuni za nchi husika lakini pia za jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki mathalan endapo kuna bei elekezi zilizowekwa kwa ajili ya bidhaa au zao fulani naomba muzizingatie ndugu zangu tusiwanyonye wazalishaji hususan wakulima wadogo na maskini. Kwa mfano hapa nchini tumeanzisha masoko ya madini nchi nzima. Na minada inafanyika kwenye masoko hayo mara kwa mara. Tunataka wanunuzi wa madini waende kwenye hayo masoko rasmi na kujiepusha na ulanguzi. Kama mnataka kununua dhahabu muende kwenye masoko hayo tunataka wachimbaji wapate wanachokihitaji na serikali pia ikusanye mapato yake tuache biashara ya ubabaishaji za kujificha ficha zina madhara makubwa mheshimiwa rais mheshimiwa viongozi na ndugu wa shiriki mabibi na mabwana sio nia yangu kutoa hotuba ndefu mengine nilikuwa nachomekea tu lakini nitoe wito kwa washiriki kutumia vizuri kongamano hili kwa kuchangamkia fursa zilizopo jadiliani na kubainisha fursa zilizopo katika maeneo mahususi lakini pia changamoto na mapendekezo kuhusu namna ya kuzitatua sa nyingine changamoto zinachukua muda mrefu mno bila kutatuliwa zinapelekwa kwenye wizara hii zinakaa pare pare 
hazifikishwi mahali ambako zinatakiwa zimalizike yako mengine ni mambo madogo mno yanaweza kumalizwa hata na mawaziri tu maswara ya mipakani maswara ya biashara wanataka mahindi kutoka Uganda mimi kwa mfano kule kwetu kule mwaka jana tumekula mahindi kutoka Uganda Uganda walizalisha tani milioni tano nafikiri za mahindi na kule waganda hawapendi ugali kule wanakula bitoke huku kwetu wanahitaji ugali sasa hakuna sababu kama ni ndizi peleka Uganda ugali leta huku sisi tu na watu walioko hapo wanafanya biashara itatusaidia sana ndugu zangu na ndio maana nimesema kongamano hili la wafanyabiashara wa Tanzania na Uganda limekuja at the right time na nitashangaa sana leo tumekuja na mheshimiwa rais Mseveni na mheshimiwa rais Mseveni kwa kuwapenda wafanyabiashara akamleta na mke wake kabisa awe hapa Alafu tumalize kongamano hili hakuna biashara yoyote ya kuongezeka Nitawashangaa wafanyabiashara Nitawashangaa wafanyabiashara wa maeneo yote Punguzeni maneno Pawe na action ya biashara Sasa nyingine maneno ni mengi mno unajua wafanyabiashara wengine too much maneno visingizio vingi no action tufanye biashara na kama kuna changamoto sisi tumekubaliana na mheshimiwa rais kama kuna changamoto za msingi zile teni tutazimaliza haraka lakini nina uhakika mkiamua mawaziri mkaamua makatibu wakuu wakaamua watendaji wakaamua wakuu wa mikoa wakaamua hakuna kinachoshindikana nilikuwa kagera mwezi uliopita nikakuta kuna store kwamba tunataka kun tuuze kahawa yetu Uganda kwa sababu kule ni bei nzuri kule wanatoa kwa kilo mpaka elfu moja na mia sita si ndio nikamwambia mna tatizo anzisheni soko hapa waje wale wafanyabiashara wanunue sifahamu kama wamekuja sasa inawezekana ilikuwa ni tekniki tu au ni wale wanaonunuaga kahawa ikiwa bado shambani lakini biashara lazima iwe free na nikasema moja hata leo hata moja na tano chukueni sina uhakika kama wamekuja kwa hiyo natangaza hapa mheshimiwa Mseveni kama wapo kule wafanya biashara wanataka kununua kahawa waje na hizo hera kwa kilo waje wanunue waondoke wasafirishe na kahawa yao wasitafute visingizio sisi wote ni wa Afrika sisi wote ni ndugu waheshimiwa viongozi nilisema sini ya yangu leo kutoa hotuba kubwa ndefu na kuwa nyema muda wenu wa kujadili tunasubiri majadiliano yenu mengi kutoka kwa wafanyabiashara ambao yatatusaidia sisi kupata direction lakini namshukuru sana tena mzee wetu mseveni pamoja na mama mseveni na watendaji kutoka Uganda na ninyi wafanyabiashara ambao mliteki trouble ya kusafiri kuja Tanzania kuja kukutana na wenzenu wa Tanzania 
ninawaomba yaliyoshindikana miaka hamsini iliyopita sasa yafanikiwe ninaomba zile blocks ambazo zilishindikana sasa ziondolewe na bahati nzuri tuna mwenyekiti mzee Shamte yuko wapi Shamte e, yuko kule upara tunafanana fanana lakini yeye ndio msimamizi wa wafanyabiashara hapa Tanzania shirikiane ni naye twende mbele kwa manufaa ya Tanzania na Uganda Mungu ibariki Tanzania Mungu ibariki Uganda Mungu wabariki wafanyabiashara wa Tanzania na wafanyabiashara wa Uganda udumu ushirikiano kati ya Tanzania na Uganda Asante sana kwa kunisikiliza. Naomba makofi mengi tena tafadhali. Asante naomba tukae. Waheshimiwa marais kwa heshima kubwa tena Naomba nimkaribishe Mheshimiwa Profesa Palamagamba Kabudi Mbunge Waziri wa Mambo ya Nje na Ushirikiano wa Afrika Mashariki aweze kumkaribisha Mheshimiwa Yoweli Kaguta Museveni Rais wa Uganda Mheshimiwa Waziri karibu Your Excellency Yoweli Kaguta Museveni the President of the Republic of Uganda it is my singular honor and privilege indeed now to welcome you to address this uh, august congregation before you karibu sana mzee mseven asante sana mkae chini His Excellency Prince Magufuli of the United Republic of Tanzania, the Honorable Ministers, the business people, senior technical officers of the two countries. other invited guests ladies and gentlemen kwanza nacheka sana kuona waganda wamejaza masikio vyombo vya utafsiri tena lugha yenyewe ambayo wana tafsiri ni lugha ya zaidi ya kibantu sasa najiuliza watu ni wazungu ni watu gani nao i bring fraternal greetings from the people of Uganda thank you your excellency for inviting me and also the business people for inviting us to share with you ideas on the important idea of trade in order watu wamekuwa wanajiuliza kwa nini watu wanaweka vikwazo 
kwenye shughuli za biashara hasa watumishi wa serikali ni kwa sababu hawaelewi umuhimu wa biashara kwenye vichwa vyao wanafikiri kuna kuna njia nyingine ya ku inua ustawi wa jamii wa watu bila biashara they think there is another way a country can develop without trading they are not clear they don't know how countries develop they don't know hawajasoma kitabu cha mzungu moja adam smith ambacho aliandika kwenye mwaka 1776 this is 300 years ago wengine hawasoma hicho hawajasoma hicho kitabu which is entitled the source of the wealth of nations utajiri nataka nisa utajiri wa inchi wanatoka wapi that's why they, they, they delay they think they are doing wanafikiri wanasaidia wafanyabiashara yes stop they think they are doing favor to the business people they don't know that for the country to survive they must do business so coincidentally i had actually in my written speech i had started with that that point i didn't know what you were going to discuss here but uh, I, I know that's what the problem is in order to put trade in context it is good to remind ourselves that man has been here on earth for the last four and a half million years binadamu wamekuwa hapa miaka million nne na nusu most of that time man has had to contend with two enemies oppression of man by nature in the form of diseases floods drought wild animals etc and also oppression of man by fellow men slavery feudalism tyranny colonialism crime etc kwenye miaka milioni 4 na nusu binadamu amekuwa anakandamizwa shida za aina mbili shida ya kwanza shida ambazo zinatokana na mazingara mazingara mazi, mazingira mazingara surround nature what do you call nature nature the second one binadamu wengine kukandamiza binadamu wengine wenzao two problems for the last 4 million years oppression of man by nature and oppression of man by man with the successful and colonial struggles independence was achieved and even democracy was achieved this laid the basis for at last africa being free of tyranny by man because prior to this africans were living under the tyranny of the chiefs or under colonialism or under slavery or serfdom that left the problem of, of oppression by nature 
During most of the four and a half million years, man had been trying to tame nature by inventing tools or technologies like the stone tools, the invention of fire, the invention of iron tools, ETC, that helped him to work and try to ameliorate his condition. Much of this effort was by man's or beast's muscles. i.e. man, horse, camel, donkey. It was after the Renaissance in Europe that man started using machines. The printing press was invented by Johannes Gutenberg in the year 1440. The steam engine was invented by Thomas Savory in the year 1698. The railway, the railway steam engine, was, was invented by George Stevenson in the year 1823. It is this shift from the use of human and beast muscle to the use of machines that marked the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So these African uh, civil servants and politicians, they are out of date. They think we are in the era of blacksmith who are using muscles Niliambiwa kwa Swahili hakuna neno moja la blacksmith. When, wakati nilikuwa moshi niwauliza ni kusema blacksmith wana mwitaji wakasema mpigaji wa chuma cha pua. <laughs> Lakini hiyo sio neno moja. Kuna neno la kibantu labda labda siku hizo nimepata hilo neno. Oh niliondoka ni, ni zamani mlikuwa hamjapata. So the blacksmith kwa lugha za kule barani ni omhesi omhesi okuhesha So the African actors don't know that the time of the people who are using muscles like the blacksmith or using animals to do work, like the donkey or the horse, they don't know that those days are long gone. It's now almost 400 years, 300 years, since the introduction of the use of machines to do work. It is this shift from the use of human and beast muscle to the use of machines that marked the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And this is where the issue is. This is where the issue is, either you want the country, your country to progress or to stagnate and collapse. The, the use of machines ushered in large-scale production. When you go to mas machine production, you are no longer the other Muhesi who is producing one hole every, every two days. You are now producing many products per, per minute. The machines don't produce moja 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 moja. They produce en mass. The use of machines ushered in large scale production. Mass production of goods and services can only be sustained with commensurate large-scale consumption. 
This is where the African people are out of date. Large scale production must be matched by large scale consumption. If there is a disequilibrium between the two, you get a crisis. That is what happened in 1929 when capitalism had to crash and was forced to mutate, to change into quasi socialist system of the welfare state. This linkage between large scale production by machines and large scale consumption. They just produced, produced until 1929 when there was nobody to buy. You produce, but nobody buys. If nobody buys, what happens? You suspend production. You lay off the workers. Because the workers are laid off, they can no longer buy even what they were buying because they have no money in their pocket. So there was a, 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 a crisis which these professors of the university should know about. 1929, when capitalism collapsed and had to change now. That's how they introduced what they call the welfare state. Whereby, even if you are not employed, the government gives you money so that at least you can buy. This is how the welfare state started in, in Europe. Because they could see the disequilibrium between large scale production and low consumption. This is where the government, that's how after the Capitalism became quasi-socialist. The welfare state, where the government had to give free money to the unemployed people to enable them to at least buy the products of capitalism in order to save capitalist system. It is these three points that took long for actors in Africa to grasp. The three are shift from power of the muscle of man or beast to the power of machines in order to do work more efficiently and on a bigger scale. Secondly, shift from the pre-capitalist system of primitive self-sufficiency of communities, which is sometimes called subsistence farming, working only for the stomach, to working for food security working for food security and commercial production, working for the pocket. There is also that issue of which needs to change within each, each of our countries, because in Uganda certainly it is still a problem, where, especially in a rich country like Uganda, where you don't have to be very bright to survive. If you are, even if you are not so, so bright, you survive. In other countries, when, when, when you are not bright, you die, and the matter is resolved. But in a very rich country like Uganda, but you, you live, you just eat it. And that's how, like for instance, in Uganda, as recently as 2014, a total of 68% of the homesteads of Uganda were still engaged in subsistence agriculture. That means Chirimo Chatumbo Pekayaki. I don't know the figures of Tanzania, but certainly in Uganda, even by 2014, 68% of the homesteads were engaged in Ichirimo Chatumbo Pekeyake. Akona Chirimo Chamufuko, 
no production for, for the pocket, only producing for, for, for eating. Third, so this is the second problem. Certainly in Uganda it's a big one, and I've been engaged in a big campaign to wake up people to produce for the stomach, but also for the pocket. Thirdly, once the people wake up and start working commercially, the volumes will be so big that they will need huge markets within the respective countries, regionally and internationally. This is the, the third problem we would have to deal with. When these Africans wake up, who will buy the huge things, the huge volume they are producing? It's good in a way that we are underproducing now. Because many people don't have much to sell. You hear President Magufuli telling you that uh, the goods going to Uganda are 7 million tons. But if you take a stretch, I, I don't have the figures, but you can go and check it. If you take the, the part of China from Beijing to Shanghai, how many tons are going there each year? Because it is uh, about the same distance from Shanghai to Beijing as from Mombasa, for instance, to Kampala. There are some, some maybe slightly longer. But how much volume of business? How, how many tons? So why are these people here sending more, less tons to the ocean than the ones in China? Kwa sawabu, kwa melala, as the president was saying. They are not producing. Many of them are just eating free things which nature is giving them. Because here it is easy to survive. Even if you don't work, you don't die, or you, or you don't die quickly, you die slowly. <laughs> on Akufa, Kimia Kimia, Sio Kwa Gafra. These three are a must for Africa to survive. They answer the question. Because the, the question in all this, really what, I don't want to blame so much the business people, it's mainly the government people, really. The big problem with the, with the government people is to answer the question which Adam Smith answered in 1776. Where does the wealth of nations come from? Utajiri wa mataifa unatoka na unatoka wapi? You need to answer that. Of course, the answer is there, but we need to agree that that is the answer. Where does the wealth of nations come from? By the time Adam Smith answered that question, Europe had been for 300 years meandering around looking for, for solutions. For instance, one theory was what they were calling bullionism. The habu and the silver. I don't know what they call silver in, Swa in Swahili. Some people thought that gold and silver were the wealth. And a country like Portugal and Spain, they went to South America, killed all the Red Indians, stole all the gold and all the silver, but ended up being the most backward countries in Europe. So it was clear that gold and silver were not the wealth. And that's why this man came to help Europe 
uh, with that answer if you read that book of, of his. That's why he's called a, one of the classical economists. Where does the wealth of nations come from? One point of his analysis was that trade, trade is one of the sources of wealth. Trade. When you produce and you sell, you are generating wealth. Prosperity in the modern context comes from producing a good or a service and getting enough people to buy it in sufficient quantities to make the venture profitable. Fortunately, by 1980, our leaders realized the importance of at least number three of the, of the three points, the issue of the markets. That is how the Comesa, the ECOWAS, were born following the, the Lagos Plan of Action. However, the issue of achieving prosperity through the selling of goods and services on a large scale cannot be satisfied by just the internal market of each country or even the regional market. China and India individually each has a population of 1.3 billion people with a purchasing power of US dollars uh, 14 trillion for China and 9.4 trillion for India. Yet those internal markets are not enough for either India or for China. Sasa, lazima tujiulize ndugu zetu Africa. Inchi kama China, iko na watu bilion moja na milion miatatu. India, the same. Kwa hiyo, ndani ya kila inchi, wako na soko kuwa sana. Lakini ayo masoko ya ndani ya China na India, haya watoshi, they are looking for additional markets. Lakini sasa hapa Muganda, achuwana watu milion arbaina moja, anafikini wengi sana. He doesn't need any other market. And Afkiri Amefika, he thinks he has arrived. This is very dangerous. This is how our tribal chiefs, you know, our tribal chiefs, we are kings and so on. Walkuwa wanajipa majina mazito, simba, nini. Lakini wakatu wenye nguvo walipofika, Yuna mbaru kuwa simba, aligeuka paka. Because they were deceiving themselves. They were engaged in self-deception. They thought they had power which they did not have. Because they did not understand what was required. And please, the leaders of today of Africa, you should be very careful not to be like those chiefs. If you do, if you do not understand the process of trade, you are definitely a liability to, to your people. Now, you get a country like China, internal market 1.3 billion, the size of the economy of China now is 14 trillion, but they see that the internal market is not enough. This is very, very dangerous. Hence, the quarrel between China and the USA, Uganda contributes 
to the prosperity of China, US dollars, 875 million per annum. Mchaina yuko na 1.3 billion kule ndani kwake na mimi Muganda baya melala na kwenda kwake kununua vitu kutoka kwake na na I sent to him 875 million per annum dollars na mchangia yuko na siko kuba tayari lakini mimi na muongezea mimi masikini na muongezea do, dollars milioni 875 kwa mwaka muhindi na mchangia 1.15 billion dollars kwa kila mwaka in addition to his big internal market in addition to what he's getting from america in addition to all those na mimi na muongezea We do this by buying their products in addition to selling, to, selling, uh, to the internal market. Neither the Chinese nor the Indians will say that we have got a big enough internal market. We do not need the additional market of Uganda. I'm therefore most pleased that the Africans are waking up to this point. When I come here, I really feel, when I hear the speeches, I can see that people are waking up. Hence the topics of today's conference, which are the attractiveness of our countries as the de destinations of investments, harmonization of strategies and partnerships in emerging data economy, bilateral trade and infrastructure, reducing the cost of doing business between our two countries, local content as a key to unlocking long-term value in extractive industries. Your conference will discuss all this. I would be most interested to learn the conclusions you come up with. Out of the five topics, I have long formed opinions on three of them. These are bilateral trade and infrastructure, reducing the cost of doing business between our two countries, and local content as the key to unlocking long-term value in the extractive industries. In the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 6, God, Jesus said, what God has put together man shall not put asunder. The landlocked countries are organically linked to the coastal states in such a way that they will all benefit. First of all, most or all the goods coming from or going to Burundi, Rwanda, Zambia, Eastern Congo, Uganda, and South Sudan must pass either through Kenya or Tanzania. So this is a good arrangement. In Mpango ya Mungu, Mungu ndiya me arrange like that. This became a huge opportunity for all the countries involved. These trucks buy fuel, the drivers and turn boys buy food, stay in hotels, pay port charges, etc. The goods coming from Uganda have been for a long time only being produced by just 32% of the homesteads. You remember that in Uganda, we still have the structural problem of 68% of the homesteads kufanyia tumbo peke yake. Hiye namanisha kwamba manyumba 30 na mawili kwa mia ndiyo wanafanya shugri za pesa. I don't know the figures in Tanzania, you should go and check. I will be very interested. Uh, so, you are lucky you don't have too much good disturbing you here. Because 68% of the Ugandans are asleep. They're just working for tumbo only. But I'm trying to wake them up. Now, when they start producing, you will be flooded with the goods. Not these 7 million tons His Excellency is talking about. This is nothing. 
compare with what I told you to compare with Shanghai and, uh, and Beijing. Why? What are the volumes there? Even when I went to Mombasa, His Excellency Kenyatta told me they had expanded now. They were going to handle, I think, 21 million tons or something like that, that the port had increased. But, but uh, I don't know the port of, of Dar es Salaam, how many times Kakoko is handling. You know what Kakoko means? Kakoko means a small insect. <laughs> oh, are you, are you Kakoko? Are you the hen? <laughs> Either you are a hen or, or a small insect. Which, what are you? <laughs> oh, small but uh, very, very powerful. So, when these people in the hinterland wake up, the production, the volumes will be so big, so big. I am in a big campaign along the lines of my campaign of 1995 to get our people out of this disorientation, only producing for the stomach. Once they wake up, the volumes of, the, of both imports and exports will go up dramatically. In order to facilitate the movement of these huge volumes of goods, we must, as your topic says, work seriously on bilateral trade and infrastructure. Fortunately, the governments of Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya are seriously working on all the infrastructure projects as never before. Even the government of Rwanda is also working on the roads inside Rwanda and the government of South Sudan has also started working on the roads in uh, South Sudan. I imagine the government, the Burundi used to have good roads. I don't know how the situation is now. This work on the infrastructure will automatically lead to point number two, the reducing of the cost of doing business in East Africa. Moving a container by rail and water from Dar es Salaam to Port Bell will be US dollars 1,600 instead of the present US dollars 4,500. You can imagine the saving. The container will go at 1,600 compared to the present $4,500. That's almost like a, a quarter now. It's like a quarter. Uh, that is if we use the railway, and I don't know whether they are talking about the old railway or the new one. The new one. Uh -huh. The new one. Huh? The new one. Okay. The, a, a container will be transported at $1,600 by rail and water all the way to Port Bell compared to US dollars 4,500 now. A saving of three quarters. Fortunately again, the East African governments are working aggressively on power. In Uganda today, the total generation of power will soon be 2,000 megawatts with the completion of uh, Karuma. Karuma is not here. Huh? That remains, what, re what remains is reliable transmission and lowering the cost of power to the manufacturers by removing the distortion of the price by Ujagari Dam where our officials made the mistake of borrowing expensive money. In order for the Uganda government to reduce the cost of doing business in Uganda, I will no longer allow the borrowing of expensive money or private sector developers who want high profits in three areas of the railway, electricity, or the development banks on account of high interest rates. 
They can invest in road tolls, telephone companies, etc., but not in the three areas. The railway, the electricity, and the development finance. These three are not areas of profiteering. They are the mshokoro. I don't know the Swahili word for this. The bone marrow. Bone marrow. What do you call bone marrow in, uh, in Swahili? Hmm? Uyonjo. Somebody write it for me. The, the bone marrow. Write it for me. Uh. Uroto. Uh -huh. The it's called uh, Omsomyo in Uganda uh, or Omshokoro in the other dialects. Omshokoro. The, but it, now um, I'm told that it's Uroto. Uh -huh. Asante sana. So now these three electricity, Garimoshi, the railway, and development finance are the Uroto of the economy. And if you get a cancer of Uroto, it's a very serious sickness. That cancer is a special cancer known as leukemia. Very dangerous. So we can have expensive money in other areas, but not in this one. So when you are discussing financing, because I think that will, will be one of the topics, is that I, I will not accept any expensive financing or profiteering for these three areas. Umeme, Garimoshi, banks are Mayendereo. Not the other commercial banks. The commercial banks can lend to, to, to traders who want to go to China and bring a expensive goods. If they are not bought, that's, that's not my problem. But for the railway, the umeme, electricity, the Garimoshi, and the development bank, we must get either uh, concession of funding or other form of, of, of funding. When the bone marrow gets a cancer, that cancer is a very bad one. It is called leukemia. We do not want leukemia of the economy. The private sector can invest in these areas, but must settle for the modest profits and for longer periods of investment recovery. As far as the big power developers are concerned, the price of a unit of electricity must not be above US, US cents, US five cents per unit. On the side of the cost of money, the FDIs will fund their projects using their own money from abroad. The local investors will benefit from the Uganda Development Bank loans that should always be around 30%, not the criminal 23%, charged by the greedy commercial banks. The stock exchange may also not be useful in financing the basics, the basic infrastructure for production. Why? It is because shareholders are also looking for profits. Stock markets can fund factories, hotels, ETC, because those can recover their money from the consumers and they are not the Uroto of the whole economy. 
reducing the cost of doing business between our countries is both a question of hardware and software. The hardware part is to build the roads, to build the railways, to provide electricity, etc. Without these, the costs cannot go down. Once they are built, then you have the issue of the software, which is what the president was talking about. Delays on the borders, non-tariff barriers, etc. The railway is being built. I salute His Excellency Magufuli on that. We are also going to revive the water transport on the lakes, Victoria, what we call Narubare, there is an indigenous name for that lake, Narubare, the lake of the gods. We think the gods will stay there. Albert Mwitanzige, that's the one on the border with the Congo. Edward Mutumbi Ruchuru, the one with the, the, one with the Congo. The railway and water transport, using the Mombasa example, will end up spending, uh, as compared to the one of, like the one of Dar es Salaam, US dollars 1,800 per container. That's from Mombasa now, but I can see, I can see the one of Dar es Salaam would be cheaper because the one of Dar es Salaam of Mombasa is 1,800 dollars. Uh, compared to 3,400 by road. But the one of Dar es Salaam was 1,600. That will make Dar es Salaam very competitive. Finally, on the question of using the extractive industries maximally, the Ugandans, the Tanzanians, the Kenyans, the Banyarwanda, the Burundi, the South Sudanese should for sure be able to run the transport business arising out of the mining and petroleum operations, should be able to do the catering services, should be able to provide the professional services, legal, medical, and with proper training and accreditation, they can also do the art artisanal services, like welding. This is all crucial. However, additionally, in the case of Uganda, there is the question of the earnings from, for instance, oil, the government share. Under my leadership, this money will never be for consumption and salaries. Why not? Because these resources are exhaustible, they are finite, they will one day be no longer there. What will they have left to the Ugandans? That is why I insist that money from these resources should only be used to create durable capacity for the Ugandan economy. Build power dams, build irrigation schemes, the railway, scientific research, and some aspects of education. Therefore, the use of revenues from the exhaustible resources should only be used to create the durable base of the economy. The exhaustible uh, should give back to the durable. In the petroleum, we use the formula of PSA, Petroleum Sharing Agreements. The company uses its own money to look for the oil. If they get the oil, they share with the government in order to recover their share, but also make a profit. The rest goes to the government. Why is this formula not used for the other minerals? I have not yet got a good answer. So, Nashkuru Kuja Hapa, Jambala Bombala Mafuta, Mafuta Yako Yako Hapa, Yamekwe Poka Miaka Million Biri, it will come out, it is under the control of the government of Uganda. And uh, we have agreed with the government of Tanzania on the pipeline. I'm very grateful to His Excellency Magufuri for the, the formula and the concessions he made to the oil companies and to the, to the pipeline company to make the, the project uh, uh, economic. So be sure, 
be sure the government of Uganda will not be found wanting in implementing this project. Asante sana, Mungu awabariki. Thank you.